The Mark Thompson Show. How about it for Shadow Stevens, everybody? Come on, Woo! Hall of Famer. Look at you. <laughs> wow. What a year you're having. First of all, happy birthday. I know you just knocked over another birthday. Yep, yeah. You're only 97 once. <laughs> <laughs> God for you. You know, our audience feels particularly connected to you because you're all over our show. You're the voice of our show. And so we, uh, uh, shall we just say, your victories, your plaudits are our victories and plaudits. So mm. I was really excited to see you inducted into the Broadcast Hall of Fame. And was that in New York, was that ceremony? It was in New York, yeah. And it was a terrific ceremony. It was like the big time. I, and I worried because I didn't know, you know. It's like, is it going to be kind of cheesy? <laughs> You never know. <laughs> yeah, where you're having to stand there next to the steam trays and uh, get your your no, award. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no. no, it was great. It, it was really well done, and uh, and I and I really like all the people that were nominated and or inducted. Um, just a, a terrific group. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. So give us a sense of the inductees, at least this year, in addition to yourself. Like, were these people from, uh, just like, what kind of work did they do? Oh, well, they're from, you know, all over the radio industry. You know, uh, John DeBella, um, an institution in Philadelphia. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, these are these are personalities on the radio or broadcasters, and, right? And uh, management. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, uh, Nita, uh, Nina uh totenberg oh sure the uh yeah. uh npr was mm -hmm. she she reports on the supreme court i think or the courts yeah, yeah and, and and like i said when i mentioned that i was inducted into the radio hall of fame <laughs> <laughs> you know totenberg immediately my my um and i said this uh, uh you know on the uh at the lectern um that when i told my my partner who is uh an international corporate um, attorney from South Africa. He said, when I came to America, NPR was the whole thing and Nina Totenberg was it. And then I tell my writing partner for Mental Radio, uh, Joshua Weinstein, say, uh, Nina Totenberg. He goes, you know, I donated to NPR and I have a Nina Totenberg. Like, <laughs> <laughs> badass. And, and of course, I agree. But yeah, well, great people. Really great. Piece. That is a, it's a, that's a, that's a pretty strong field. Exactly. I mean, I could argue that, I mean, not to stir the pot, but I could argue that Shadow Stevens should have been in this radio hall of fame or broadcast yeah. hall of fame. You should have been there a long time ago. I mean, you crushed it with, you know, Casey Kasem had American top 40. You took over American top 40, which it's, it's tough to follow Casey Kasem after all. And you expect, Bloated it. I mean, it went. It became an absolute international sensation. One um, million people a week for seven years. It was remarkable. And they flew us around the world. It was really tough. You know, we had to fly to Oslo and then you know to Bangkok and then to you know, Hong Kong. It, yeah, the Shadow <laughs> Stevens' life has been uh, that kind of. He's like the James Bond of broadcasting, Kim. It's um, hard. It's hard for a man out there yeah, in the world. Yeah. Do you? Do they when they, when you get inducted to the National Broadcast Hall of Fame? Uh, feet, by the way, that I will likely never know. Do they give you a big portrait on the wall, like an exhibit in the National Broadcasting Hall? What does it look like? It's pretty impressive, and and the uh, and the award is substantial. It's quite heavy and glass <laughs> pyramid. And I, I wish I had it here. It's upstairs uh, in a prominent place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you. I'm glad you're showing it off. You know. Yeah, but, but I have to say also that you're. You know, you could have stopped the Shadow Stevens career back in the days where you were reinventing formats and promotion in radio in Los Angeles. Well, that's you what I have... said to them. I said I. I can't. I'm actually shocked that i'm being nominated even to the you know radio hall of fame um i quit you know i at 24 years old they made me program director of krla and you know and i threw myself into it and and hired b mitchell reed and brother john radgren and and 
wrote and produced 50 jingles that that were performed by the captain and Tennille and Kenny Loggins at a 30, 30 piece Mormon tabernacle choir. It was hilarious. We did these amazing things. And then they decided with all the success we were having that they knew better. And I knew that they we would do things that I would then be blamed for when they failed. So I quit. And, you know, I go to K to uh, start K rock and kind of the same thing happened. We just like set the world on fire, this cutting edge, you know, we, we discovered queen. We were like, it was all about new music and all energy all the time, but we weren't being paid and <laughs> we were going bankrupt and I quit. And then the whole staff quit. So then I bounce back and I go over to KMET and I do it again. And it's like, it becomes number one in six months. And it's B Mitchell Reed and, and all of these great personalities, Jimmy rabbit. And, um, again, it's like hugely successful. And then management decided that really I needed, what I needed to do is terminate the such and such, such, and, you know, three really incredible people, including brother John, who was one of the great talents in the history of radio. And I said, why? He said, that are just not working out. What? N no, no, you're just not working out. You're not going <laughs> to be into you. So I quit. And I was heartbroken because it was radio meant everything to me. But I was out of radio for the next, well, I went back to K-Rock and, and consulted for a period of years because I could sell my own time and keep all the money. <laughs> no, that's right. But by the way, that's no small thing. I mean, uh, when you can sell your own time, that is the way to make the money. But, you know, it's funny, I think about that. And, you know, I keep uh, saying broadcast, this Radio Hall of Fame, it's it's amazing as I'm just looking at the inductees. But the idea somehow that you could do what you did then, I mean, think about how elaborate, everything you do, Shadow, is like top production and then you, you know, and inventive and clever and you did all those federated ads, et cetera. I mean, you, and, and of course you're an actor and sitcoms and et cetera. So you've done a lot of stuff, but just your radio stuff, I don't think it, it could be done today. I, I just don't think there's the money in radio in general. No, no, there's not a chance it could be done. However, doing what we did with Federated, I would be a multimillionaire uh, with, on TikTok. <laughs> oh, it's true. You're right. Because it was expensive to do. I mean, I had to have a team and everybody had to be paid. And, and um, it was week in and week out. We would do six or eight television commercials a week for six years. 1100 different commercials wow. six i had my own production studio i had my own post-production i had all my cameras and lighting and we would go all right we'd write on monday we'd get ready on tuesday we'd shoot on wednesday we'd edit on thursday and turn them in on friday and we did that for six years and no commercial ever ran longer than 10 days so it was an assault of creativity and it just went on and on and on. And if we had that kind of creativity going on TikTok, come on. Yeah, you'd have, I mean, well, here's the thing. And just to, I mean, I know this is like one long love fest, but I think you deserve it. I mean, you finally got this recognition, but just on the federated spots, each one had a hook. I mean, it was like a, uh, it wasn't just like a big retail slam. Like I can, and I've read for and voiced a bunch of like Toyota ads where you just, I mean, there, there are a hundred of them, uh, but they're just like, you know, an all month at Toyota, it's the Toyota Celathon or whatever. That's just like an in-your-face straight retail thing. You, the, the Federated ads, Kim, they were really clever. They were story and characters and everything, and it all had to be done in, this, in, the, in the time of a commercial. So, yeah, I think there would have been a virality to that that would have taken over TikTok today. I agree with you. Yep, but, oh, well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> well it's not too shabby you haven't done poorly um hey the other thing that i uh, noticed is that your family which is a beautiful family of course um i mean just you know you and your wife are you know, like just You're all my wife let's face it i mean my daughters look like my wife and my daughter's daughters look like my wife <laughs> Thank you. Really yeah. although amber does have my fingernails which I <laughs> <laughs> well <It's perfect>. uh, <laughs> speaking of that they're in a Lincoln commercial that's yeah. your family in this Lincoln commercial check this out Kim this is uh Shadow's gorgeous family those are all people who are really in his family so who are all the people in the in the spot it's my daughter Amber and her husband 
uh, Andrew West, and they're both actors, and their children are Ava, who's the older one, five years old, and Winnie, who's two. Oh, so cute. Both just magical. It's hard to Pretty believe. great to get yeah. the whole family cast that way. Is there a backstory there? They just... Uh... They just contacted them, and and uh, the next thing you know, they were doing it, and now she's going to be driving a Lincoln. And she, <laughs> <laughs> she really likes the car, and and it is a pretty terrific car. Well, there's yeah. nothing, yeah, you know, what not to like. It's a it's a high end SUV, you know. But hey, Shadow Stevens, now that you've you know gotten all these accolades, and you know your family is uh, part of this spot that runs all the time. Reminding us that our families are just drab and boring and driving <laughs> some small vehicle to get from here to there. Uh, what's ahead in the new year? You have a project. You're taking mental radio to a live venue is what you were telling me. Well, we're trying. Um, will it happen? We don't know. However, um, four months ago, Gil Smith, who is the president of the Montauban Theater. The Montauban is at Hollywood and Vine, basically. And it's been there since the 1930s and under different names. And it's completely restored. It's almost a thousand seats. It's gorgeous. And Gil has been running it for 20 years. And he called me and he said, one of the things that got me through COVID was listening to metal radio at night. I was sitting there in my house by myself and I put on earphones and I would listen and I would feel uplifted. What do you think about doing it as a live theater show? I said, can we, we think we can do that? And he goes, I think we can. I just um, was spearheaded a show from Australia at the beginning of the year. And we sold, um, what do you say? It, it was a massive hit for 12 weeks. Um, and they're, now they're taking it all over the country. He said, I think the same thing can happen for you because your stories are so interesting, funny, and have layers of meaning. And we can have giant screens and uh, surround sound. They're putting in surround sound so we can really do the whole play of sound from the far left to the far right and circling around the theater. And giant screens with multi, multi screens within screens or singular screens and use that as another uh, visual uh, attribute. And so we started working on it. And um, and I designed all the storyboards for it's, uh, the whole thing is written. It's it's a two hour two act play, um, with live sing along, and and some of the songs are fantastic. Act one ends with, "I'm eating pizza for the Lord." <laughs> <laughs> He's eating pizza. She's eating pizza. We're eating pizza for the Lord. Everybody, I'm eating pizza for the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrific uh, it but, sounds very uh trey parker and matt stone sounds very south park you know you know i kind of idolize them and uh it has a lot of humor like that in it and uh monty python oh that's terrific oh i really i, I hope that comes together and uh live music live singers uh a new orleans kind of second line style music with trombones and tubas and and gospel chorus come on how yeah. cool is that? That would be just awesome. I mean, really, you know, I mean, plus the thing, Kim, you know, if you haven't heard Metal Radio, everybody is watching as well. It's just, uh, there's just so much going on. And that's just the oral part, the A-U-R-A-L part, you know, the part you mm -hmm. can hear. The idea of kind of marrying all of that with uh, live performance, spectacular. I mean, it really would be terrific, so... Amber, Amber and Andy play some of the characters in, in the show. And uh, and Amber told, we had a meeting yesterday and presenting it to this big producer. And and um, and she said, you know, we did a live read through two weeks ago and all the actors were there and they're all brilliant. I mean, Josh Robert Thompson is one of them and, sure. and a few people you, you might not know, but they're brilliant. And doing it live, doing it, you know, in person with the giant screen, throbbing with this giant art going on in the background she said you know i have listened to metal radio and it was almost too much there's so much going on that i didn't grasp it all until i saw this us doing it live and she said this is the exact right venue for people to experience the ideas and the stories that are part of metal radio so she was 
really excited now. <laughs> it was really nice. I just saw a couple of the visuals and uh, that, that you had uh, that pushed along, and they're spectacular. So yeah, I showed wow. you the, uh, that one of them is um, one of the the stories is that it's a social club for the well to do who gloat and have lackeys, and <laughs> and it's called the Holier Than Thou. And the artwork is this Art Nouveau building with giant pink wings on either side of the door it's fantastic well i want you to if you would grace us with a live rendition of the way we end every show which is i'm shadow stevens for the mark thompson show and then you take a beat then you say bye bye <laughs> that's how we end every show yeah. i'm shadow stevens for the mark thompson show bye bye uh, and i wonder if you would grace yeah. us to, to see you do it would be great <laughs> I, I, uh, for the let me see that. Was it? Yes. I'm I... <laughs> <laughs> Is this below? He's like he's thinking, Mark. I did it as a favor once to you. You really want me to do this on your on your little BS show? You're the voice of our little BS show. You know, our little BS show when we started was really a little BS show. Now it's really growing, Shadow. And I I give some of uh, the credit to you. So. Um, and I'm your fan. I well, have been a fan of you for years, and I'm happy to be a part of this and love your team. You guys are terrific, and you've always been entertaining, and you've always been uplifting and have a great sense of humor. That's all I ask in life. Oh, that's so cool, pal. Well, we love you. I'm going to yeah. use the recorded version because I can tell I don't want to arm twist you on uh, giving us a live version. You mean like, ladies and gentlemen... You're listening to the Mark Thompson Show. I'm Shadow Stevens. Bye bye. I love it. Come on, Shadow. We love you. Thank you, pal. Congratulations on uh, the Hall of Fame, and good luck in the new year. Thank you. You too. The Mark Thompson Show. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell, you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.